Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how we blur out the background of an intro video like this in Final Cut Pro 10. We're going to be using only the built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro, and we'll talk a bit about the framing of the shot and how we can kind of make some smart decisions about what we do in camera uh, to make this work well. Um, this video is sponsored by FX Factory, um, so do definitely go and check out all the plugins they have on their site. And in particular, if you have a look at the Ripple Tools Complete uh, plugin pack, you'll see they have a lot of uh, trackable plugins um, in the new version um, of that pack um, that can do things like tracking objects and actually then blurring out either the background of those objects as well, but using a kind of motion tracking as well. We're going to stick to the built in plugins in Final Cut Pro 10 for this particular tutorial. Um, so let's dive in and have a look at how we create this effect. So basically this footage that I've shot here is shot on my iPhone. Um, so we're not using a kind of like a high-end camera or anything like that. It's my iPhone 8. Um, but we're going to give this kind of depth of field effect. Now there's a few things to look at in the footage itself um, before we kind of get going. One is I've been careful to keep most of the, the detail in the background uh, across the right. So that allows us to kind of blur out sections of our video. So none of the detail is around my head, um, which will be the moving part of the video. Um, so if you're planning out shots, then always think about that a little bit as you're looking to blur out the background otherwise you'll end up with a kind of crazy rotoscoping uh, job which will take you days rather than minutes but with a bit of careful planning and shot framing um, you can kind of create this nice effect so basically we'll have a look at the timeline first of all um, and see what we've got here so down on the timeline we have uh, three layers here uh, one is an adjustment layer um, now i am using the adjustment layer from Ripple Tools Complete, um, but you can also use other adjustment layers. There's lots of free ones out there that you can use. So basically, um, it's an easy to kind of download tool, and I'll leave some links uh, below, both to Ripple Tools Complete on FX Factory, but also to a free version as well. So you don't need to kind of step out and, and kind of buy anything for this tutorial. So we're just going to turn this off. Basically, this adjustment layer um, is doing our color adjustment. So it's kind of brightening up the face a little bit and then also darkening um, up the background. So we'll have a look at how we do that kind of uh, color adjustment to kind of mute the background. So I'm just tapping the V key to turn that adjustment layer on and off. And then the next layer um, basically is allowing me to add an extra level of detail um, in my blurring out. So I've basically brought back into focus um, some parts of my t-shirt here um, and the right of my arm, which were blurred out uh, when I used the kind of first blur tool here which is the focus uh, blur, which, which if used carefully is a really great way of blurring out kind of smartly parts of your image, um, but keeping other areas in focus. So we can basically kind of move around uh, what's in focus here and what is out of focus. So um, let's go back to the beginning here. We're gonna start right from scratch. I'm gonna delete these two layers. Um, I'm gonna select my layer down here and go to edit and remove effects, which is gonna remove all my effects um, from that layer. So we're basically back to scratch so I'm going to drop my audio down which I had done already we don't need to hear me talking um, in the demo as well as explaining what's going on in Final Cut Pro here so the first step is to kind of pick a piece of video as I mentioned that is uh, gonna be easy to blur out the background on so this one um, I'm not moving a lot my head is moving but it's on this white background so we can feather into that quite nice and easily. Now reasons for blurring out the background can be many. Uh, one reason that I do it sometimes is if I want to put text across on the right here. Um, if I need to do that then blurring the background out and then dropping it uh, back in terms of the color and saturation and the brightness um, will allow me to kind of hide a little bit of this crazy wire mess that I've got behind my screen here. We're going to work on this layer first of all. Um, before we do that we'll just duplicate uh, this layer and I'm just holding down the Alt key and dragging that layer up to do that. And then we'll tap the V key to hide it. So basically with this first layer, the bottom layer here, we are gonna come to our effects across on the right. Now, before we do this, um, if we just go to Window, Workspaces and reset everything to the default workspace, then this is what you'll see as you normally kind of open up Final Cut Pro. So you won't see those effects across on the right and you need to use this button to bring those up. So once you've got your effects up, we are coming down to the blur options and I'm using this focus blur um, for this particular example and you can see it kind of nicely sets us up um, for this particular exercise where now when we drop this on um, basically it's blurring out a portion of the image. We have an on-screen controller here that allows us to kind of move around decide what is uh, in focus, the kind of main part of the image that's in focus and you see we're getting kind of close to what we want anyway across in the inspector and if you still don't see the inspector just go to window 
show in workspace um, and check the inspector and that will bring that up and now we can basically change the the width um, and height of our blur so basically I'm going to increase the height to 100 and um, so I basically want all of this in focus and then I'm just going to increase the width a little bit somewhere around 35 there and I could even kind of pull this across to the left there just a little bit um, so we're pulling in uh, the blur towards my face so obviously I can work on the width a little bit more and if I just want to do a quick version of this then this is where I'd stop I would basically add the focus effect um, get it to focus in on my face scrub through my footage make sure that I'm not moving out of that in focus area in the middle um, and then we could leave it there but I thought it'd be fun to kind of have a look at a couple of the other tools in Final Cut Pro that we can use to improve this effect and kind of bring things into focus so that's where this second layer comes in so I'm going to tap the V key to turn this on and you should see everything come back into focus um, and now with this layer I'm going to come to my masks across on the right hand side and in my effects I'm going to grab my draw mask and drag this onto my clip my second layer and you can see here I get this message click to add a control point so basically what I can do here is I can click around this kind of right hand shoulder of mine um, to make sure that's in focus um, when the rest of the image on the right is out of focus so if you remember this area here is out of focus and um, so I'm going to use the draw mask just to sharpen up my shoulder a bit so I'm going to go to 100% view here and we're just going to kind of roughly click along my shoulder we're going to add a bit of a feather um, to this use this little red box to move around mysterious red box which uh, pops up when you're zoomed in and seems to bug a lot of a lot of people when they're working in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, and we'll zoom out now so that we can kind of see the edge and basically that shoulder is all that we need we don't need to kind of draw around the head in detail uh, or anything like that in fact I'm going to click away from there so when I add the feather it will kind of blend in nicely so you can see now if I click away from that draw mask just onto compositing here you can see we're kind of close to, to what we want uh, here in terms of the blur so basically that edge is moving around a little bit and the quick fix to this is just to add a little bit of feather uh, onto that edge and a little bit of smoke and mirrors, some text popping onto screen and myself talking um, will distract from the fact that this edge is a little blurry except perhaps to the, the kind of trained eye and we could go either way with it. We could blur into my shoulder or we could kind of blur away into the desk and just kind of let a little bit of that show. So we'll leave it on negative 23 here and so basically now you can see if I play this through there's a little bit of uh, kind of this edge going on but because the talking is the focus of the video here um, we're kind of hoping that people will ignore this so when we click back on the bottom layer we can obviously now adjust the amount of blur that is there and that will kind of help you a lot so often less is more um, so if I increase this a lot then obviously it's going to look very weird on the edge but if I drop this down to just kind of 16 17 pixels we are going to drop that cable mess out of focus um, and the fact that my shoulder is a little bit blurred um, will be kind of less obvious um, as we're showing stuff on screen okay so that is the, the kind of first step here um, to get this layer set up and the next one is using the adjustment layer. So I'm going to come into my generators up here and my titles. And the Ripple Tools Complete basically has a bunch of tools, but one of the most useful ones, um, as I mentioned, is one that you can get for free, um, is this adjustment layer. So they've kind of gathered a lot of these tools that Final Cut Pro editors have been using for a long time to kind of make edits um, into one kind of handy to use pack. And I definitely recommend it. It's got some cool stuff. A couple of things which we're not using today, uh, like the track blur. So we've got this soft focus which is kind of what we're doing today um, with the built-in tools but actually we can do this and actually track it so if we've got a car moving across the screen or something like that we can kind of keep that subject um, in focus um, whilst we kind of soft focus the background like you can see in the example but uh, we're not talking about ripple tools complete here we're talking about adjustment layers and basically the adjustment layer behaves in exactly the same way as a video layer except that if we added color adjustment to one of our video layers um, it's going to look weird because we've got these two layers now kind of masked together 
So the adjustment layer allows us to add color adjustment to all of those layers in one go. So with the adjustment layer selected, we're going to come up to our color corrections here. And I'm going to work on the exposure here. So basically, I want to kind of squash the detail um, in this image. And before I do any color correction, I like to bring up the waveform here just so I can see that I'm not making any of my blacks too black or kind of blowing out any of my whites when I kind of crunch the, the kind of detail here a little bit. Um, and the way for the shortcut for the waveform, if you go to the view menu here, is Command 7. So basically, I will tap Command 7 to toggle it on and off. Uh, and what we're seeing here is the left of the image across on the left here to the right. And um, so we can see it's a lot brighter on the left. Um, so this is the wall and my the side of my shirt here, uh, the side of my face. And then it's a lot darker towards the right because of the gray of the computer screen and the desk and all that kind of stuff. So we can read an image um, from light uh, to dark uh, and from left to right here as we kind of modify it. So what we're going to do here is um, actually add a color board, which is what we have up here. And we're going to add a shape mask. Okay, So I'm going to add a shape mask across here on the right hand side. And I'm going to fade it quite a bit. So basically, I'm going to use this uh, and I'm going to come back up to my options here and invert it. So that now when I make any adjustments, if I brighten or darken things, you can see it's protecting my, my face. So let's stretch this out a little bit more and we'll make this much more kind of gradual across to the right. So now you can see when I darken that right hand side by moving the exposure slider, um, it's darkening just that right hand side. Now I don't want to blow it out like this. I don't want to kind of push all my blacks. You can see them down here. I don't want to kind of destroy the image or the detail of the image like that. I want to kind of make it a bit more subtle. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to increase my blacks and I'm going to drop down my whites. And you can see all this color detail is kind of coming together here. And I could drop down my midtones a little bit as well. And now when I pull down the color here, you can see even though I'm making the image a lot darker, I still have the detail in the image. So basically we can kind of moderate these so we have detail still in the image um, and we get this nice kind of vignette, um, but all the color information is still there. We haven't blown it past that um, zero point there or above the 100%. The so we still have that kind of nice level of detail. And then we can just decide where we want that to fall off to. So we get a little bit of darkening on the left here as well, uh, which works quite nicely. And basically um, we've got this whole right hand side of the image blurred out and crushed down and that is basically mostly it. So we can now see that we've pushed the focus to the left hand side of the image um, by basically blurring out that right hand side. So obviously with different videos, um, if there's a lot of movement, uh, then this can get a lot more complicated. Um, but with this kind of talking to camera video, um, then you can kind of work this quite nicely. I often don't spend a lot of time doing this for my intros in as much detail, um, but it's been really useful for client videos uh, when you want to maybe blur out a logo or something like that in the background or something on screen, um, like emails that you don't want people to see. It's always useful to kind of be able to push that background right back and blur out the, the detail there. We can also add extra color adjustments here as well. So if I, on my video layer, um, I've got my color board here. Uh, if I come to my color adjustments, I can add, for instance, maybe a color curves adjustment. And if I add another shape mask here, I'm gonna push this over the face. So we're just gonna really focus in on the, the face here. And I can modify face on its own again with this mask placed over the face. So you can see I'm basically kind of brightening up the face a bit as well to kind of pull it away from the background all the time looking at my waveform checking that I'm not blowing out any color so I still have all the detail in there and stuff like that um, but we now have if we come back to our video tab up here and click away to compositing you can see now we've got this nice it's edited video um, and to the naked eye the naked viewer people wouldn't notice it makes a nice space across on the right as we mentioned if we want to drop in some basic uh, type um, on the right hand side 
So let's just go into our custom type. We'll drop this on, simple piece of type. I'm gonna hide my waveform and we'll just squash this a bit. So now I've got a title here. If we put this across on the right, it pops out nicely from that background and uh, we've got a kind of nice space across on the right where we can uh, place some type, place a title that wouldn't be the case if we had all that kind of color detail in there. It doesn't pop out quite as nicely. So that's a brief overview of how to basically blur out parts of your image, how to use color adjustment to kind of accentuate uh, the important part of your, your video. Um, hope that's been useful. We're just using the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro 10, but there are lots of kind of plugins and stuff, as I mentioned, um, for doing this in a somewhat more automated way, although I probably wouldn't stretch away from the built-in plugins um, for these kind of short intro uh, videos. Um, it's not necessary for this kind of stuff, but there's definitely some fun stuff out there to explore. So thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials, and I do look forward to seeing you on the next one.